Part 1. Determining Eligibility for MS-4 Waiver This guidance video is designed to help you, as the owner or operator of the MS-4, determine if your municipality may be eligible to receive a waiver from the requirements of the MS-4 General Permit. The website that contain information about the MS-4 program that you should be most familiar with, if you're not already, is the Stormwater MS-4 Permit and Forms website and the MS-4 Toolbox website. In this video, I will be showing you some of the information that can be found on these websites, but I will not be discussing all of it and strongly recommend that you spend some time and familiarize yourself with the information on these websites. For now, let us go to the Stormwater MS-4 Permit and Forms website. This is the website that contains information specific to the MS-4 General Permit. This is the website where you can find the actual permit. From this set website, we are going to go to the MS-4 Toolbox webpage, which is located, the link is located on the right, underneath important links. The MS-4 Toolbox webpage contains a lot of useful information and resources that you can use to better understand the MS-4 program and or develop and implement a more effective stormwater management program. Since this video is specifically addressing eligibility for the MS-4 waiver, we're going to open up the decision tree for MS-4 waiver document. This decision tree will help guide you through the process to determine if your municipality may be considered for a waiver. The first question is not as much a question about eligibility for a waiver as it is eligibility for needing coverage under the general permit. This question reads, does the municipality own or operate a separate storm sewer system including roads with drainage systems, municipal streets, catch basins, curbs, gutters, ditches, man-made channels, or storm drains within the urbanized area. If your municipality does not own any system that is designed to convey storm water that is not a combined, combined sewer, then there is no need for permit coverage and your municipality needs to submit a letter indicating this to this address. If on the other hand, your municipality does own a system or you are unsure of your urbanized area boundaries, Move on to the next question, which reads, does the MS-4 serve a population of less than 1,000 within the urbanized area? Now this question may seem a little tricky to answer at first, but the DEC has prepared some tools that should help you to get an approximate number for your population within your urbanized area. For this, we need to go back to the MS-4 toolbox webpage. Scrolling down a little bit on this page, we find the Google Earth map of estimated populations within urbanized area for MS-4s. I'm not going to click on this map, but encourage you to do so. To open this map, you will need the Google Earth application software. If you do not already have the Google Earth software, then you need to go to the DEC's Google Maps and Earth webpage and follow the instructions to download Google Earth. As I alluded to earlier, this Google Earth map can also be used to help understand the urbanized area boundaries within your municipality. Please be aware that the populations shown in this map are estimated and by no means represent the true populations within the urbanized area. To determine the true population within the urbanized area, please refer to the guidance video titled Part 2, Determining Populations Within Urbanized Area Based on the 2010 Census. Now going back to the decision tree, if after either looking at the Google Earth map or following the instructions for determining the true populations, you believe that the population within your urbanized area is less than 1,000, you need to move on to the next question, which reads, have any of the water bodies that receive discharge from the MS-4 been identified as being impaired? Notice that there is a note at the bottom of this question that indicates you must consider any discharge that flows directly through another MS-4. You can answer this question by going back to the MS-4 Toolbox webpage and find the Google Earth map of impaired water bodies applicable to MS-4s. This map lists all the water bodies that are impaired for a parameter that would make your municipality ineligible for waiver if you determine that your municipality discharges to it. 
I will give you a little bit of a helpful hint here. If you open up this impaired water bodies map and the estimated populations map, Google Earth will overlay the two layers so you can better understand if your MS4 discharges to an impaired water body. Going back to the decision tree once again, if you finally determine that either your MS4 does not discharge to an impaired water body or that the impairment of the water body is not one that is listed in this table, then your MS4 may be eligible for a waiver. If you feel that you meet all criteria and are eligible for a waiver, send a letter to this address requesting a waiver. Here's the example language for a, a waiver. It just says that we feel our municipality's population is less than 1,000 and that our municipality does not discharge through the MS4 into any water body that is impaired. When the department receives the waiver request, they will forward it to the region asking for comments. When all comments have been received, the department will send you a letter indicating that your waiver request has been received and reviewed. The department will also attach a formal waiver form that you will need to fill out prior to being granted for a waiver. Please be aware that if it is determined that you are ineligible to receive a waiver, you will need to gain coverage under the general permit if your municipality is not already covered. This now completes the video part one, determining eligibility for MS4 waiver.